1949, St George's Hill. Billy Bragg says it was where he tried things out, made mistakes, learned lessons. We need a bit more vocals, I think, mate. It was in a pub close to the Blackwell Tunnel, like so many other venues, long gone. Oh, live venues are absolutely crucial for young people to find out whether they can make a living through their own creativity. It's why he and other veterans of the business were at a photo call at Parliament today, calling on developers to build new homes which didn't threaten live music. We acknowledge the modern world we live in, people want homes, developer moves in next to a live music venue, build some flats, people start complaining about the noise, it's the live music venue has to shut down. That's not right. I understand that they want to um, build more houses for people and make lots of money for themselves, and so they make so much money they should be paying for anything that actually upsets the community. In one of the most high-profile recent cases, the Ministry of Sound nightclub fought off closure when new flats started going up in Elephant and Castle. A deal was struck ensuring the homes had extra soundproofing and acoustic protection. That should be obligatory for developers, says this MP, who's proposing a change in the law. The developers, who are, as I describe it, the agent of change, they're the ones who, when they put in the planning application, have to take the necessary measures to make sure that the venue is not going to be conflicting with the new, new residents. The years pass, but some are still challenging the system. What's the message for the politicians in there from an ex-ex pistol? Uh, from an ex-ex pistol is just bear in mind how important it is. You know, as I understand it, British music is one of our leading exports and they've got to get behind it and support it. <laughs> it's not yet clear whether that support will be forthcoming from the government. Tim Donovan, BBC London News.